Lord God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be good and true and pleasing in your sight. In your name we pray, amen. Yesterday, I watched two friends of mine, Stitch and Alex, say their vows to one another and entwine their lives in the bond of marriage. I watched the ceremony via Zoom, like you do nowadays, um, from a coffee shop struggling to get a stable internet connection. The wedding started a few minutes late after the small wedding party had to take cover under a pavilion uh, from a sudden downpour. And once they shook the rain from their hair and brushed the droplets from their clothes, the ceremony began. And as I watched these two wonderful and amazing women fight against their happy tears and croak out the vows that they had written, I broke down in the middle of Starbucks, crying at the beauty of it all. I probably should have been embarrassed, but I wasn't. Though they were soaked and the video was grainy and broken, their joyful glow was unmistakable. It wasn't just their smiles or their joyful tears of happiness that wet their cheeks or even the excited and nervous giggles that escaped their mouths when they fumbled and dropped their papers that held their vows into the puddles. It was more than that. It was, it was something divine that made them glow. A holy glimmer that pokes through when the worldly veil is pulled away and the fullness of who a person is, is allowed to shine. Stitch and Alex were shining as they spoke their vows, pulling back their veils to expose their authentic selves to one another and to those who are closest to them as they made these profound commitments. I felt so blessed to be able to witness this ceremony because what I saw was a little glimpse of God in both of them. In our scripture text today, Moses came down from the mountaintop where he had been in deep conversation and communion with God. God had even blessed Moses with a peek at her raw divinity as they spoke. When Moses came down from the mountain to speak to the Israelites, the skin of his face was shining with light, with a holy glow, and the people were terrified. They did not know what the shining of his face meant. They did not know what to make of Moses. They had seen amazing things since their exodus from Egypt. They had seen pillars of fire. They had watched as the sea was parted, providing them safe escape from the army that chased them. They had even been sustained with manna as they journeyed across the wilderness. And now, Moses, who had disappeared up the mountain for so long, came down with God's words tucked under his arms and his face glowing with an unknowable brilliance. This was a strange miracle indeed. Moses' close encounter with God had transformed him in such a radical way, and the people feared what that closeness might do to them. They worried at the impact of the divinity that lingered so near to them and even within them. They were fearful at the glimpse of holiness that made itself known through the shining of Moses' face and the transformation that resulted. I wonder what it might have been like for Moses to see the fear in the eyes of his people when they looked on his face when he showed them what it meant to have a close encounter with God and the real light that was revealed. Did he feel shame? Was he afraid of what people would think or what they would do? Perhaps he just wanted to live his life without the awkward stares of those around him. 
I wonder at the swirl of emotion and feeling that must, must have raged inside Moses as he hid his face, hid himself from the world. And I wonder if this might be a feeling that many queer people can relate to. Though this month is one of celebration and joy for many, it didn't start that way. There is a painful side to its history. Pride Month began as a result of the Stonewall Uprising, a series of protests, marches, and riots led by trans women of color and other members of the LGBTQ community that occurred in New York City because of brutal police raids of places that were friendly to those people, like the Stonewall Inn. These were places where members of the queer community could be themselves, they could dance, and they could sing, and just be who God made them to be. Where everywhere else, they were called illegal and immoral. The world told them to put a veil on, to hide themselves, and they refused, and they held on tightly to that claim that they too were sacred. Pride Month is also a time when many people choose to share their full and authentic selves with loved ones for the first time. And like Moses exposing his face to the Israelite people, it doesn't always go the way that we hope. Sometimes that vulnerability is met with hostility, that exposure is met with rejection and hatred, causing us to hide ourselves from the world again out of fear or a need to feel safe or just wanting to live a life free of the judging stares of others. Throughout this month, my social media accounts are flooded with people sharing their coming out stories, both old and new, good and bad. Some of the most impactful have been the young teenagers that place their phones in their pockets and live stream their coming out to their families or close friends, needing the support of hundreds, maybe even thousands of strangers that have already accepted them online. Sometimes those coming out stories are met with that hostility and rejection and hate by people who promise to love and care for them. They lowered their veil and they were rejected. And there are other stories where family and friends become a well of unending support and love, they become the mountaintop to retreat to when the world offers only judgment. My own coming out story from a year and a half ago was a surprisingly mundane experience. I decided to tell my family I was bisexual while I was living in Minneapolis, completing my internship requirement for seminary. I like to joke that seminary uh, <laughs> made me bisexual, but it's, um, yeah, that's just a fun joke that I like to tell. <laughs> um, on my visit home, I shared with my parents that I was bisexual, and honestly, the most challenging part of that conversation was getting my parents to mute the news long enough for me to get the words out of my mouth. For them, nothing had changed. They still loved me and they still supported me like they promised they always would. But for me, everything had changed. I was freed in a way that I didn't know I needed to be. I was unveiled to myself and to the people I cared about, and I could feel that divine glow eke out from within. I was transformed. And we can catch little glimpses, little sacred flashes of divinity in those holy transformations during Pride Month. This is a month full of transformation and unveiling. People of every age and background take away the veil of acceptability and allow their truest selves to participate in a celebration of the spirit. 
It is a holy holiday, a time where members of the LGBTQIA community share their full and authentic selves with the world and in spite of the world. But pride celebrations are more than just parades and parties. They aren't spectacles for straight and cis people to gawk at. Pride celebrations are opportunities to abandon all the worldly veils that we wear to cover the fullness of who we are. Those metaphorical garments that cover the divine glimmer that God has blessed every single one of us with. That light that maybe some are still afraid of. And on this day, a day that we call Open and Affirming Sunday, we participate in the love that God has called us to live out every single day, not just today. When we say open, we mean that we become that place where the divinity of all can be expressed. When we say affirming, we mean that the divinity is acknowledged and honored. This place is the mountaintop where we can encounter the divine within ourselves and where it is allowed to shine freely. And we need to be that mountaintop because the world is full of messages that tell us to hide our authentic selves. These are messages that say that who we are is inappropriate, unacceptable, loud, aggressive from the smallest parts of everyday life to the big things that settle in the depths of who we are. In subtle and not so subtle ways, we are told to hide the people that God made us to be. The people God continues to shape us into. Moses unveiled himself, no, Moses veiled himself to hide the shine he received from God, the same shine that his people feared. But God has blessed each of us with that glow that shine that reflects the divine image of God, that glimmer that comes out when we encounter God within ourselves and when we express it in vulnerability and in joy of all of who we are. So I ask you, beloved, what are the veils of this world that keep you from shining? What standards or expectations, biases or stereotypes keep you from shining with that glow that God has given you? What part of yourself has been hidden? We all hide. We all throw on a veil to cover those vulnerable parts of ourselves. And sometimes when others open themselves up and reveal that sacred authenticity to the world, we judge them by the same standards that prevent us from being fully who we are, who God made us to be. But God has shown us a new way. God has shown us a new way in Jesus Christ who has torn the veil, who has freed us from the need to conform, to meet the standards of this world, because what truly matters is the divine expectation to love one another, and to love ourselves, to embrace all of who we are in Christ as blessed creations of God who shine with a holy light. So though today is open and affirming Sunday, when we throw the doors open and we celebrate the divine spark within each of us, let the mountaintop be carried with us everywhere we go. May we become the mountaintop where others are able to unveil and shine. And may we shine forth with the light of God today, tomorrow, and always. Without shame, without fear, in all joy and love. Amen.